Hi and welcome for another drawing tutorial lesson thing. Um, I'm Aaron CCCA and I will teach you some more about uh, drawing your first guy. And I um, I uh, rewatched my previous video and came to the conclusion it was more like an intro to the lessons than it was a lesson itself. Because I didn't talk much, I just drew and gave the information. So today will be different and I will teach you some more techniques you might use. So, first thing, like I said before, draw layer upon layer upon layer. Each time adding little uh, changes to it to make it better and detailed, more detailed. If you're doing this on a regular paper, you can't delete the layers um, behind it. Erasing it is also very bad, but what you might do is draw very light so that you don't need to do that. So let's continue with this armor. Um, on which layer am I drawing right now? Wait a second. Oh, I'm using the eraser. Sorry. So, for the armor, he has normal armor, like a uh, Minecraft armor. So it will uh, won't be fancy. So you can just use normal regular armor shape. You're free in that because it's. Uh, not determined how it looks like in real life. Otherwise, you might add more details, like uh, muscle printing on top, whatever. But it must look uh, like it's uh, possible in real life. So I will do uh, several plating on top of each other, so that when he moves, the plating will uh, move with it, so he can bend over. Not being a puppet. Band holding his armor so it won't fall off. We'll do a little line here because here the plating is bent into the back. This is the front part, this is his side, so that's a little bit bent, that's why I'm adding this line. Creates a bend like feeling. Um, okay, he has a t-shirt as a shoulder, so best thing to do is make it look like a t-shirt and not like stone. So first of all, let's get it in 3D. And add in a little line here. Not sticking to his arms, so that this is actually going over his arm. Since uh, fabric is very movable, you'll have several lines in it to indicate how the fabric is folded on his arm. So how to do that is actually very easy. Create a wavy pattern with lines going in, lines going out. That's actually, that's a great technique to use with capes. In a note pattern, but not actually with a t shirt. So let's erase that. Just a little wavy pattern, not too much. Since here is, uh, since here the arm meets the body, there will be small folds here too. Okay. Can add some more folds to it if you want to create a more realistic looking t-shirt should follow the line of its body though you can't draw a line like this because that would re look unrealistic because there is always an arm beneath it so follow the line of its body 
then we'll have his shirt. So it hmm that that doesn't look neat. Lines are too straight. So his arm is in that direction, so that's better. Um of course Steve is very muscled but not too much. So let's add his biceps. Here. Back of the arm. His elbow. And I uh, don't know uh, that much about drawing muscles, didn't learn that to myself, but you might take a picture to uh, create, uh, to add more muscles, more realistic. I just do the ones I know, the ones mostly used. You're free in that, but make sure that the length of the arm isn't too long. So this piece should be um, as big as the upper part of his torso normally. That's uh, how big it is in real life. The elbow comes at the same place at the end of the ribs. About that spot. The underarm is a slightly longer than the upper arm. Not much. So then we have him holding a pickaxe. So his hand will be bended around the shaft of the pickaxe, which is a cylinder shape. So you can't do a straight line here because that would look unnatural. To create a cylinder in 3D is actually easily just an ellipse on the top and a shaft. So that continues to here and here. On the bottom, no need to add an ellipse because you see it from the top, not from the bottom. Always know how the perspective will work from where you're viewing certain parts. Make sure the lines are straight too. No need to do it really fancy because this is just a basic tutorial. Um, okay, so then the pickaxe head is a little bit bigger than the shaft. So we'll do gap here. This part where it's attached to the shaft. As you can see, the lines are a little bit bigger than the shaft itself. Actually, viewing this from top view, so should inverse that. Okay, so basically, don't forget perspective can't change. If you're looking something from the top, parts of it, all parts of it will be looked from the top, not from the bottom. At least, mostly. You have special locations, but I'll tell you about that later. So then you have the pickaxe head, sharp at the front. Since we're looking at this at the top, you'll start at the part connected to the shaft, the upper part. Go down and goes uh, near the more. Uh, how do you say it? Um, you'll have to make sure the line ends at the same point as previous line because it's a point here. Sharp point from the pickaxe. So it starts wide, keeps getting narrower, more narrow, till it reaches this point here. Back, that isn't the case. Back is just massive part. 
so then you just keep the same distance each time. So, let's continue with his hand. His temp will be at the back of the shaft. So you need to draw it like that. Temp connects here to the body. So a little triangle to indicate that. Should be a small triangle. A bit too big. Okay. Then here the fingers go around back of shaft. Then will have his hand will be this kind of shape like a little box. Because your fingers aren't bent completely, they have straight parts in it. Creating a box like shape. Like this. Um So, that's the one hand. Second hand, we have his fingers here. So his fingers doesn't end here. So if you draw it like this, it looks like the fingers are just sticking to the shaft instead of his hand. So this, commonly used, is wrong. Should leave an open space. Let me draw this real quickly. Four fingers. Okay, then a little bit of black. You should get them a little bit back. No, that looks much better and realistic. And has a little bump here with his temp. Going there. Sort. Handle goes above. Temp. Temp. Whatever. So, okay. Handle sort. You can use any shape you want. Just make sure you're using the right perspective. If you're drawing the blade, the blade is in the center of the shaft, so you can't draw it from the side like that. You have to start a little bit higher so that it actually starts from center between these two lines. So about here. Draw it with this equally to uh, the shaft. Follow the same shape. Then you can start drawing the blade. Whoop. It's hard to draw a straight line with a tablet that can't be moved. On paper it's easy, you just turn your paper a little bit. For the uh, blade of the sword, it's easiest to just do the outline first. So that you know where, how big the sword is. Then, for the sword, the shape is actually a kind of V-shape each time until it reaches the top. So to indicate that and only, uh, let it look like that, there is a nice and easy way to do that. Start from the bottom, draw a middle line. You can also do two lines if the side is a little bit flat, which is not in this case. And at the top, you don't continue, don't continue to draw this line until the top, because then you'll have a sort that looks kind of like this. More like a, a crystal-shaped sort instead of a blade. Wait, let's just use Ctrl Z V. Okay, so what you will do is split the line in two here in a V shape. So the point will be pointed, and the sides 
will be a V kind of shape like that. Um, that's for his sword. So shaft runs here again. Cylinder shapes don't draw them straight. It won't indicate that it's a cylinder. Again, also for the bottom part will be a cylinder, but different than the shaft. So will be a circle here and a circle in the back. You can draw the full circle. Then you can look at it and then draw a line from one circle, the bottom, to the other circle at the height of which you feel is the perspective. This is a uh, basic drawing so I'm not going to use any advanced perspective techniques like uh, using a complete perspective grid so it is freehand so just you'll have to feel it's good can't use any tools for it it's, you'll just have to feel it so then you do another line here created 3D that's his sword bottom of the hand so um, let me see it's hard to teach some of the techniques here because I am drawing this guy in real life but that guy isn't a good example for teachings but it is the basics so not gonna complain about that what else so let's uh, review a little of the things you must know by now first you start off with a stick guy following the shape of the body just stick guy then you'll draw lines on top of it to indicate arms legs body etc head then you'll draw start starting with drawing the muscle plants joints hands Etc. Feet. Don't forget the feet. And hit more head like shape. Then you start drawing on top of that, on top of that, on top of that, to and add more and more details. That's actually a failure. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it like that. That's a little messy because I'm not concentrating right now. I'm just reviewing. So. Let me get it a little bit bigger. After you're done that, you got your puppet, and you can add more details like hair, t-shirt, clothing, and such. About the hair, that's a little bit hard to do on a computer. It's much easier um, to use this technique for hair on paper because then, when you draw a line on top of another line you will actually gonna see the texture so in the computer you want to set up opacity a lot less and I'm not gonna teach you the complete technique this is just fast so that you can do it but they're not professional yet because it is the basics and his head is a little bit big back So, that's better. So, when you're drawing hair, you will first have to draw the pattern of the hair. What I mean by that is, um, you will have to draw lines that follow 
the direction of the hair. So for example, here it runs through the back, so you'll have to draw lines going to the back. Here it goes down and to the right. Following its entire head, here it goes up again. Lines can intersect each other when over each other. And then when you do that, you'll have actually the center of its hair, uh, of its, uh, the epic center of its hair. That's here for this drawn. You might, you might not have one of these. That's okay. But when you ha have hair that runs in several directions, like human hair, you will have one of these. That's easy. Just draw circle lines like a little star and then what you then do is set the opacity a little bit bigger then you'll have to continue drawing lines following that pattern over each other starting at the back with small lines next layer you'll start a little closer to the epic center and each time it a little bit closer until you get to that epic center. That creates a hair like feeling because you're drawing the hairs, little lines, where they should belong. For example, if you were to just color that, it wouldn't look like hair because its hair doesn't flow in that direction. But if you do small lines where they belong, it will look definitely more realistic so let me finish that real quickly again lines can run top of each other as you can see the epic center is the darkest spot of its entire hair and it looks a lot real more realistic than I just filled it with color okay so that's for his hair. For beards, you have many types of beards. You can use fill beard. For fill beard, you can use the same hair technique. For a uh, beard like Steve has, you'll just simply use small dots across, running across the beard. <laughs> Place of beard. You don't need to draw the line of the head first because when you do that, then Draw points, it wouldn't look that great. It would look like they are uh, contained in a box. But if you do it like this, without drawing the line first, it looks more realistic. No need to draw his mouth because his lips are hidden in his beard. Need to do a little line here though, with low opacity, or just soft drawing because here the beard ends. Um, eyebrows, that's easy, just draw upper part lines in that direction, lower part, no, actually upper part lines in that direction, if he's looking that way, lines in this direction, otherwise lines in that direction, the opposite, and the bottom is actually the inverse of that, so in that direction for this tutorial. So... Let me get rid of that and get a smaller brush. No, it is a little bit unnoticeable because I'm using a computer with draws with pixels. But if you are doing this on paper, you'll see the difference for sure. I also make the bottom a little bit darker because the light shines from above, so the bottom will have a shadow on it, cast upon it, so it will be darker. Don't do it too light. Okay. So, another thing that you might use for his face is to add a little bit more detail, like you have a bone here. When it cross, you can't 
you can't see that with most people so it is nice to draw that correctly though um get the opacity back to there let's run hmm let's see it runs from the mouth a little bit from the mouth let that let's just use less opacity though because it is it isn't actually a line that you can easily see it's more like the shadow that you can see later on I'll add the shadows to form the head then you'll uh, know what I mean but for now let's just do it like that runs from his mouth to a uh, uh, to uh, one line with the one corner of the eye, then it runs above to uh, actually above the ear, somewhat like that. Snake, he has everyone has a piece of muscle or thing here. Don't know actually what it is, but you have two lines here in your neck normally, unless you're uh, a little bit unnatural. Actually, you have that when you're yelling. And he, as you can see on his head, is yelling, so that's why I added. That's a purple tongue. Okay, so. Um, what else can I teach you today? Not much, actually. For basics, I learned you all you need to know. That's actually the puppet technique that you needed to know, layer upon layer. Um... Most things I will teach you later on are more advanced, like adding shadows. Let me uh, show you uh, something. And color, like this. I added several color layers. This is an airsoft drawing. That's a mask. Using several opacity to create a uh, uh, pants with uh, army colors. Um, how is that called? Um, camouflage, couldn't, uh, in other words, I used also several types of grey for a uh, shirt and a gun and I uh, used several colors of skin color to uh, add shadows and such so but most of my drawings I do on paper is black and white because you can use different shades, more different shades with black pencils than you can with colored pencils, which is actually a lot more efficient. Um, hmm, let me open another example that I'm working on drawing from one of my from a book I got. Dark dust. It will. It is a little dark. Drawing. That's actually the bad guy in my book. He's looking over in, from it through in the, the glass of an airship into his massive army. And this is basically drawn with normal pencil and paper. Uh, and I scanned it in and added more details. So this is the basic drawing I drew. And then scan it in, create it. Or, or I'm working now on the dashboard here using blue gray colors because here you actually can use different shade with color thanks to the opacity settings, but you can't using normal pencils. Then I added the cape, then I added more detail to his head can see and next something I'll add in the end or just use for the in the end is a dark glow I used so first of all you can see here light above dark at the bottom that's because light is cast from above so here it captures most of the light but more at the bottom it don't but if the light which from come from the back the entire cape would be in glowing and his head but now it comes from a little bit in front of him 
and the dark glow that is dark aura surrounding him creating a feeling that he's evil another technique that they use that I will teach this is by the way drawn with a perspective grid as you can see to the perfect perspective used in his drawing everything is having the same direction of lines everything is coming to the center point and this is a one point perspective what most do is drawing the lines of the walls from start of uh, the uh, corner of the drawing towards the center I didn't do that start from the center do it somewhere here and here because if you will do to the corner it would like it would uh, it would uh, appear like this is a room and you're standing out of it I wanted to create a feeling in which let's grab the hand sorry I won't draw on this I would like with that I'm having trouble with my speech here <laughs> should uh, maybe take a nap after this so I wanted to create a feeling in which you have the feeling that you're standing right behind this guy and that you would get scared that you are frightened by the darkness that is coming from this man from this pure if man so when I drew the lines instead of to the corners a little bit higher the walls continue towards this point here and that point here so you are basically inside the room instead of outside and it is actually very simple but it is a mass difference do not say so as you can see that was a more advanced drawing this is just basic so you know what you are going to receive you're going to receive a fully professional a uh, fully professional lesson actually few uh, couple of uh, professional lessons about several aspects in drawing that you should learn so this was second tutorial and the last of the basics tutorial of a uh, human form because there isn't much basics to cover here anymore I think I've got everything so Next episode, will, next, next lesson will be about um, our more uh, professional hair technique lesson, or shadow lesson, or maybe start on a mecha or robot shape basic teaching. Might do something with animals too, although that's a little bit similar like human forms. But we'll see. So. Goodbye friend, hope you learned from this lesson. If you have ideas how to improve these lessons or some uh, feedback for me, please give it so that I can uh, adjust my recordings to it, just the way I teach. And yeah, see you next time. Boy, this. Okay, so I'll see you next time. Bye.